Hello, I'm Nagesh Karmali and um, I have some four projects. Uh, so one, uh, there, there is another project with Yogendra Pal and uh, so total four plus one, five I think, right? And uh, so he is Rajesh Kushalkar and one of the projects he would be also mentoring. So that is, uh, that is the first one. Okay, so that is porting of C, C++ applications uh, onto the cloud. So the idea is uh, you have a C++, C++ application, okay, which will get converted to some intermediate code and then that intermediate code will be converted to Java, JavaScript because JavaScript runs everywhere. Okay, so there have been lot of quite, quite a lot of applications which have been written using this fashion. And we are looking for uh, educational applications, um, maybe like uh, running Scilab. Have you heard of Scilab? Like MATLAB, Scilab, R applications, or you know, like anything which uh, people use. So maybe for common student, uh, that could be uh, like a spreadsheet, you know, G numeric or something like that, right? Something which people are used to on the desktop. And if you provide them online, which uh, they can use it and um, they can learn from anywhere, right? Uh, today, data is becoming cheaper and cheaper, right? So you don't have to have a desktop. People are mostly having mobile, so so that is that's the impact we'd like to see. So as many people having mobiles, they should be able to do something with such applications. And um, so like you know we are targeting simulators and emulators and um, so it, it has to be LTI compliant. LTI is nothing but, but uh, learning tools interoperability. Uh, it's about you know uh, I can have an application embedded in some other application, some other web application and I can, I can have the access mechanism for that application which is embedded okay and and I can divert you know like for example if I want to say um, say, say if, if, it's an, if, if it's an assignment and a, a user has used this application okay which is already inside another application and um, and the user is actually answering answering right you know somebody tells you to write a particular program and you want to write it using that application or or it is already given to you then after being checked you know some data about your like you have scored some marks or not or how how many minutes you have been online you know such data can be fed back to the main application so using LTI it's possible so it's like you will not feel the user will not feel that it's a separate application it's a part of that application and you will never come to know that separate so, so like this, you you can uh, give the same feeling that you have, you know, on the uh, desktop. Um, it's it's the same application which goes online. I think if he has something to add, maybe he can. So uh, basically, I'll just like to add a few points out here. Um, as a, uh, you know, there are a lot of applications for the programming like Python, C, uh, Java and all these things, there are a lot of uh, online com uh, compilers and all these things are available. But what about uh, some of the simulators? There are a lot of simulators for electronics and all these things, each are there, but are, and it's a desktop application. So a lot of uh, 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 applications like what you are looking at, Open EDX, uh, MOOCs, so th there the simulation mode is not available. If you see a simple circuit simulation, if you can, uh, you can do it on desktop, but if the same thing is available on the net, how we can do it? So there are a lot of open source free tools which are already available, but it's a standalone. So how we can uh, convert those native C application so that it can be available on the web also. And uh, there we found some of the LLVMs uh, to JavaScript tools and all the same which can do all this uh, work which are basically a native C application and put it on the cloud. And the requirement of LTI is very simple of students submitting uh, a circuit simulations or anything directly online. So that's the main uh, intention of this particular project.
so let's go to the second one um, in this we are interested in uh, say for example uh, using the com commodity um, i mean just machines you know you can use any machine but if i have say four or five machines and if i want to see uh, good performance from that machine and i would like to see that if i have say four today and if i just add five six and seven later and i don't need to do anything i just have to provide the ip address to, to, to the underlying layers and it has to understand what to do you know inside right so it's it's, it's like a resource aggregation okay and uh, and for for that you know we, we are going to use open open shift I mean, if you have heard of open shift it's fine it's like uh, there's also another one which is open stack open stack is is actually an IAS uh, it's like infrastructure as a service. So what does it say is that it, it gives you an infrastructure that is uh, how many you know, processor processing power you have, how many how much of memory do you have, right? I mean you can manage those things. So I can say if I have this much of processing power, I can say I need a virtual CPUs. I can derive virtual CPUs from those processing power that you have. I can say if I have one terabyte of memory, I divide, I can say I want to allocate in small, small chunks, maybe 2, 2 GB each or 10 GB each, right? So I can, I can build a virtual machine, right? I mean, I can build a virtual machine. I can do so many things, okay? That's the, that's the underlying layer which talks about, you know, uh, managing uh, the infrastructure itself. Okay, like um, maybe IP addresses and you know networking this virtual machines and all those, um, and you need a platform as a service here. Okay, you need a platform as a service. So, you, have you heard about uh, software as a service? Yeah. Right. And what what does it do? Gmail. Gmail. Gmail is software as a service. Right. 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 So, here we are looking at platform as a service uh, because. Uh, we have certain applications which are IIT Bombay X, okay. Uh, you have Open edX, Moodle. Uh, you see, we are concerned only with uh, uh, applications which are educational applications. And um, what we want to see is that can we s allocate, you know, or can we look at some? I mean, I mean, when I actually deploy those applications, I need not worry where do they go, okay. I just have to say that I I, I give uh, five virtual CPUs or I, I give sorry I give maybe at the Docker level. So there is a containerization like like a container. Uh, Docker is also like a container. So we want to experiment with uh, different capacity. Okay, so so do do this applications uh, need how much of uh, processing power and you know and how many users would be actually part of that so the first thing is to see that your uh, the platform has to scale okay so that those type of experiments will be performed here okay so we need to uh, you know calculate uh, capacity for such type of applications say for example somebody comes and asks you that i need an application like maybe Moodle or, or Drupal or any of this and he says I have 50,000 students or I have 50,000 people. So what is your calculation? How are you going to calculate? Right? You should be knowing that if the load is this much, I have, okay, I can say maybe seven machines of this much configuration. Okay, So that's the output of this project. Um, where you you will be able to tell somebody okay that um, uh, this much of uh, computing power is required this much of storage is required okay so all these things can be calculated right and uh, the third one uh, so here we are looking at uh, so again this is uh, we are not not looking at uh, platform as a service but we are looking at you know, dockerizing certain applications. Like, I mean, one of uh, one of the applications is um, uh, Open edX. I mean, IIT Bombay X. Um, IIT Bombay X is is a version of Open edX. 
Okay. So I, I don't know whether you know about it or you have heard about IIT Bombay X, you have heard about Open edX. Yes. You heard about Open edX? Yeah. He heard about IIT Bombay X? Have you taken courses on IIT Bombay X? No. Okay. So this is just this is another instance which we have. Even um, the same instance has been, um, I mean, um, has been deployed in uh, various different countries. Okay, so same open edX and with a lot of changes, you know, the requirements that we need for our our system here. So which are little bit different than what op open edX does. So those are the things which are being customized. Okay, so here we are looking at if 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 somebody wants uh, a small, uh, you know, you want to do it a single click, you know, you want to deploy it. Um, just a single click and uh, you need you need to know a lot of technologies here so here you need to know ansible i mean you can write it down ansible you need to know uh, github git you are familiar with git yes okay so you need to know python you need to know django uh, you need to know what else <laughs> docker I mean how to write docker files okay so so these are all the things the more, much more than this you know my I, I, I might be not remembering so so the much more than that you know and in fact more important is how to so for example if you want to if you want to say that I, I I'm I'm given seven uh, maybe seven VMs or something or seven machines and I would like to say I, I have an application. I have so IIT Bombay X actually has got like 40, 40 VMs. 40 VMs. VMs is virtual machine. 40. Okay. But the problem with VMs is that I just have one VM and I cannot have another VM of the same type. You know, I have to configure it. Okay. But uh, Docker is a technology. You can uh, you can actually scale it. Right, so if you have one Docker, you can say I can have a swarms of Docker. So there's something called a swarm. Okay, so you can say if there is a load which has uh, which has increased, then maybe you know the the system itself decides five Docker's, maybe six Docker, seven Docker's, and like that. But you have to configure it. But you you'll have to see how how that is scalable. So we're looking at horizontally scalable <coughs> systems. Uh, here, um, the f the first project, um, how many people? Uh, six people, I think. Six people, but maybe five was what was declared later. Okay, the six was given uh, the requirement. Then uh, for the second project, uh, four people. Okay, the third project again six because um, here we want to do performance testing. Okay, and then uh, we maybe two people would be. Uh, involved only in doing uh, performance of the system and uh, finding out you know how many users what is the memory capacity getting utilized okay do we need to I mean what is the actual equation you know that has to be found out so so this is uh, I, I mean it's going to be like production ready right I mean so dockers which could be deployed in the production so Production is something which uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll tell you something about. So when you do development, I expect. I mean, I, everybody would expect you to actually push changes on the on the Git, right? So normally, I, I mean, I, I've seen many people, or maybe even there are some people who actually obey uh, those things. Like uh, even even a small feature, okay. Uh, push push it onto the git okay but there are some people who don't do it but which is bad so you have to push it on the git and when you push it on the git what happens so code is available code is live okay so you have to actually do i mean you don't have to do it there must be a system which does all these things testing okay the first first stage is development right so you develop something and then you go for testing Okay, both of this can go parallel actually if you have people who can test, okay, you can write code which is automatic. So, so testing is much more difficult than writing code, 
remember that so don't say that uh, if you are if you are going to write test cases means it's uh, low level job no uh, testing is much more difficult than writing normal code okay so when you do this i mean uh, you have what do you say integration testing okay so the so first thing so as a developer you are supposed to write uh, unit test cases right i mean you are supposed to write unit test cases uh, and other types of uh, cases which you feel that okay my code is working that's that's the reason it's not because you are you have to write because it is written somewhere right okay i have to write no because you have to make sure that your code is running okay that's why you have to write okay then then you have the integration test okay so in this case i you know uh, actual open edx open edx the branch which is there on git okay so they are releasing every uh, every night you understand it's, it's a night nightly build they are releasing 10 features 20 features every night so how do we keep in you know so how how is that i mean we should not be lagging behind so can i have a parallel system okay which is going to you know build nightly by fetching those codes we have to figure out what what things will go where and then i can say when the new version comes i can i can still be ready with the latest uh, uh, release so there are many releases which happen and uh, we want to see that once they release we also should be releasing at the same time so there are other branches which have to collect and you know so you see i have written that single click deployment okay so that means there must be a script or there should be a script for using ansible or lot of other uh, commands or means scripting okay uh, where you should be able to say whether it is a class b class c class code towards the end so am i ready for production okay if i click if i try to go through the stages i should be able to figure out where am i right i mean whether it's a gold standard silver um, you know bronze okay so so i mean performance testing is one of them so it's not that i would not say that you just do performance testing and then say oh okay it's working no i can still run it again and again okay i can see that means it is automated okay there has to be something which is automated okay so you run something and say oh it's giving me oh, this this one used 50 50 million users i mean you 50 million users can log in at the same time but it's you you have checked it but not everybody so there must be a script which checks that right so you should be in a position to write such scripts we say that oh 50 million users okay run it should work right something like that so uh, there is lot of code to be written here i mean by the way i would like to know your motivation for doing internship <laughs> is it only for a certificate or writing lot of code okay so if you want to write lot of code then join <laughs> then uh, the fourth one uh, android app okay so this is very straightforward i'm i'm trying to see whether whether we can use any identity management like uh, key clock presently iit bombay x does not have uh, single sign on okay so there are two problems here one is to see whether we can achieve a single sign on using say additional okay uh, centralized we i mean kind of distributed um, identity access management okay maybe like key cloak or there are many actually so one of the protocols which open edx is using is uh, saml you can write it saml and uh, we want to see whether uh, the existing uh, iit bombay x can uh, can have this open sign sign on integrated with other applications so that's that's some of some bit of code to be written 
and um, so like and and then uh, you have an android app where it will actually access the backend okay and you'll have to you know customize it based on uh, the requirements so one of them is uh, one of uh, one of the is like iit bombay x the front end the so it's not just about front end okay so you'll have to um, there must be smarter ways ways of doing things right I mean, so you may have to explore it and um, so so sign on will help us in saying that if i have multiple applications i should be able to use any of them okay uh, based on what you want to access right suppose you want to access your dashboard as a, as a teacher or or a dashboard as as a student so there are two different applications Pre presently they don't have a single sign on and if you have this single sign on uh, capability then uh, it, it will solve much of the problems so and, and and android is what we are looking at the android app then this is our website okay i think uh, this is already there right so um, aruna must have already given you this link i think i think when you register on the portal you get to see a particular link or something like that right projects uh, have you seen projects any projects or uh, you 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 are you're not seen right they have no okay so this is um, this is a wiki actually uh, you may be able to find summer internship i think this is the place where you can uh, there's very limited information but i'll be updating in the coming um, one day or two days time something like that okay so um, this wiki has lot of other resources you can even go through last year projects and many of those and there are um, i would i would expect um, uh, um, uh, not just um, you know you, you not just as a programmer i mean not becoming just as a programmer or like uh, system level you know configuration i would like to see if you can read some papers okay not difficult uh, some of the things which have actually come in uh, open edx or or uh, the uh, recent architecture the way the things are built okay so those those could be very prime to understand uh, why things are built in that way and not the way we built uh, 10 years back so certain links i would put up and uh, there, there won't be much maybe like 5 or 10 for each or each of the projects something like that but um, i mean many a times like i put like 30 40 and they are all lost how to i mean which one so i put only 5 or 6 or 10 okay so any questions here questions so actually there were a lot of projects uh, you showed us uh, so they, they are from particular uh, means basically different streams or uh, when which you uh, will be working on one was from server side one was from android app development and some other things so, so uh, how you, will you will be working only on one project uh, yeah, 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 yes sir will be working only one project so how will we be given chance to choose will we be given a chance to choose the project in which we want to work or will be given a project to work no i think it's your call so you have to choose and um, i think um, see what what uh, see uh, just becoming a developer just becoming a tester doesn't work well so you may have to know little bit of other things also so that you can communicate because if somebody is speaking in hebrew and you speak in another language so you have to know both languages no it's like that so you should know what is happening in deployment you should know what is happening in testing it's like that you should know scripting sometimes so why scripting is used right i mean why not java use java for deployment <laughs> and why scripting is used what's the reason right so only if you use it you will come to know how to what is up to you to choose you know what you want to be there are ample of things that you can do in this project i mean this project can go for 2 years and 3 years if i want to increase the number of features and if i want a world class product you know i can iterate and iterate and iterate and uh, it can it can, i mean lot of potential lot of potential you you choose a group ha ah, like this yeah 
not uh, okay and then you choose after that i mean you choose the group first and then you choose a pro pro project but um, i think if you have chosen a project then you are already chosen a group just like that right you would choose a group because you want that project right but you are worried that if there are 10 people for one project then uh, the comp competition is there <laughs> okay yeah we should see that and that uh, such competitions do not arise <laughs> okay so so the objective is to like for example if we take the open edx we have to have like uh, on open stack we have to know the number of vms so but that can be done using like uh, benchmarks right? that is how it's done yes 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 i'm so, looking for benchmarks so what so. is the like what is the process of what well, i didn't understand the objective of this activity. okay the first first thing is uh, you know okay so first thing is uh, uh, playing with machines right so you would like to know what is the typical node size that you are looking at right do you want to say okay can you say that uh, i mean you are familiar with processors like atom processors yeah atom atom processors okay. okay so i have atom processor can i use atom processors what is the minimal configuration it, it depends on the atom processor so can i use tablets which can run servers a lot, lot of there's a lot of work in doing that to find out so 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 that is one thing but you know you are not looking at that so when you look at what is being deployed okay so you are essentially trying to instrument the system okay so uh, presently can you can you uh, by sitting here can you say that uh, what is the configuration that i'm looking at okay so what are the different components of the system okay you should be knowing those things right i mean you should be knowing you should be running some tests on the system to actually figure out okay so i mean i mean the second and the third project they should sit together i mean and then they interact and like yeah. that okay so trying to put something like aws is there a easy way out then please let me know you know what is aws yeah 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 amazon web service yeah. Yeah, yeah trying to put something like like an aws okay which is elastic and yeah. which but, can but open source yeah AWS. open open source yes AWS is open yeah yeah so we have something which is running here is vmware and vmware is not open source and uh, so we want to replace it with um, you know vmware is equivalent to um, uh, open open stack okay and on top of that i mean actually so i don't I, so I, I don't need even vm uh, open stack i you can do it by open shift okay because open shift does provide all of this technology so one thing is uh, if you are going to do this project then you will learn a lot of things about these technologies how to operate how to you know you want to i mean you you'll have to write code it's not that you, you don't need to write code so why you write code what is the reason for writing code can you tell me to to make things work as you want no to automate yeah right yeah something which is repetitive instead of you going there and firing commands not required you could dashboard big dashboard everything comes right so lot of scope in writing right and something which is repetitive otherwise you don't you don't have to write code right and you want to be happy that's why you write code right something which you don't want to fire the same commands again and again and again right you want to write something which does automatically for you which tells you i mean you can use machine learning here inside i'm telling you but the only thing is how you will think and how you apply artificial intelligence or anything for that matter you can predict the workloads uh, so many things are possible in the system any more questions okay thank you i mean you sh you should actually go and read you know there are some good ethical guidelines 
and which is very important more important than writing code okay so if you if you are fine to be violating something like that yeah, i mean uh, if you if you take somebody's work and plagiarize it not good okay so always try to um, give credits to somebody else's work okay um no that hard working at least uh, it doesn't apply this year no uh, maybe just 8 8 hours <laughs> that's that was long back sorry i think we should change it to 8 to 10 hours not 12 to 16 and um, you can take uh, yeah one or two days off maybe right two days off sometimes two days off and uh, okay and there are some references i mean if you want to read you can in your free time and then um, i believe that you should uh, have familiarity with this because anything to do i mean your mind has to work right so so these basic courses are more than enough you don't need to know advanced courses or uh, if you are, did you have functional programming? No. Some you did. Which one? So the principle of programming course. We are in introduction to functional programming and logic programming. And uh, which language you use? So it was more of a generic course. Oh no, you you have not used Haskell or any other yeah. language. Okay. So. Um, Actually, uh, uh, why why it is there? Where did it go? Why oh, here? Uh, because uh, I think industry is moving towards functional, and there, there is a language which is uh, very recently. I mean, people have been popularizing it, which is uh, uh, Scala. And um, if you can write in functional, I mean, that makes more sense. Uh, and I mean. Uh, you, you have a lot of other things, you know, which it goes along with its uh, the way you write and and uh, how the uh, type system is, you know, there are no side effects and other things. So that is one. I don't know how. I mean, whether the industry is looking at. See, today if you are actually going to run, I mean, so maximum. Uh, at many places, you will find people are using Java, and then there is a JVM there already sitting. Okay, They're well configured, so JVM exists, right? So wherever you go, there is JVM. Right, Scala is supposed to run on that JVM, and because it is all all there, so you don't have to do anything much. You know, everything gets converted to byte code and like that. But the mindset, you know, the way you write code matters and in functional. It's not the procedural way of writing. And uh, actually it has survived. I mean, if you see functional has survived and um, still it is life, I would say. It's not that the many languages, uh, they have died, you know, even if they were procedural. Now, we, uh, people must have uh, heard about Go also, Go programming language, right? recent uh, ones yeah but they come and they go they come they go they come they go and you don't know what is happening with them you know but java is still there no i mean you you see java is still there so if java is there then scala will remain and if scala enters people will write more functional code okay so there are there are other things i mean which you can Okay, so all, all the projects will come over here and uh, they will all be, so if you want to go to uh, 2018 or something, you can change it, right, and then um, that's the main page where you can, uh, you can check. There are so many things, uh, you know, you may find your problems being solved here or something like that, there will be a lot of uh, this is a wiki which has been there for last uh, more than 10 years, so you can use it. Free, open, open source. Okay, thank you.